Hi. So, last time we chatted about control. And I think this time, I want to chat a little bit about fear. So, I guess what is, what is fear? What's the, what's the nitty gritty? What's the, what's the depth of the fear? And the answer, I guess, is fear is belief in how life should be, how you should be, how the world should be, as opposed to how it actually is. So, I guess it's, it's complicated, but it's not complicated. Fear is actually helpful. So, fear is basically a response to tell us that we're in danger. So we can get, um, I suppose we can get physically hurt, right? So someone's going to punch us, so there's the fear. A person doesn't look very happy, it's probably going to physically attack me, so... That fear is, I guess that fear is, is valid. Um, the fear that most of us experience is fake. So it's bullshit. It, um, we feel it, yeah. And on a whole other level, we kind of created ourselves. So, I guess it's more, it's more the, I guess the, uh, the belief of the thing or ourselves, the version of ourselves that we fear, which is, which is the, I guess the, the driving force of psychological fear. So it's it's more about choice. So I guess do you want to choose to fear that something's going to happen? Do you choose to believe these emotional patterns that are there? They're subconscious course they're they're ingrained so they're basically it's basically a guidance system fear is a guidance system I'm talking about psychological fear so created fear the fear that our minds uh, create daily um, the emotional patterns so they they tell you to be afraid of um, stupid shit, basically. So, I don't know, some people are afraid of walking down, walking through the supermarket. Um, because, why? Because people will see them? You know, that type of fear. Fear of being seen. Fear of being heard. Fear of uh, not living up to others' expectations. Fear of fear of loss, fear of uh, getting in trouble, you know, all of these things, they're psychological fear, they're our mind, or should I say the mind, which has been trained to, I suppose, the, um, been trained basically to fear everything, so there's really not a lot that the mind does not fear. Uh, and whether it's 
valid or not. It's the fear. The, if the fear feels real, it 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 does. It it makes it hard to breathe. Um, I guess yeah, it makes you feel scared. So you think that something's going to happen, and 99.9% .9 of the time, nothing happens, does it? So we're basically reliving a bullshit story that has been, I guess, forced upon us, I'm going to say, um, by the world. Because we need to fear this, because this is why we need to fear this, because this happened once. It's happened one time in a million times this one thing happened and, and now you need to fear it for the rest of your life because it could possibly happen again and yeah maybe it will but why do we need to spend our lives fearing why I don't, I don't understand it it's because we've been taught we've been trained you know as, as little people little tiny people when we're little we get trained um, only speak we are spoken to and we've been I guess trained that we're because we're little we're inferior because we're smaller that means that we are less valid what we have to say is less important um, it's less believable it's we are less because we are smaller so, because somebody is bigger, they are more. This is the belief systems that, I suppose, trap us. And it's because, I guess, as I guess a lot of people know, that it takes, you know, 20 days to 30 days to, to build a habit. So if you're, I guess, treated in a certain way for more than 30 days, um, and have no control of that well I guess you're going to start to believe it aren't you it's, it's automatic it's, you're going to believe that because I'm smaller well I'm powerless I'm, I, I am invalid um, I'm, nothing I say is worth as much as what a grown up person says so that's just an example, that's just one example. There's, there's so many so many examples and they, I suppose, are those belief systems themselves are what actually steal our attention away. So when somebody is angry with you right so they're standing there they're angry and you're not going to hurt them you know as a little kid you're not going to hurt them however they want you to believe that you've done something wrong so, it's not about teaching, teaching and showing, it's about, um, I guess, scaring, and it's not as if it happened when we were little, it's happening right now it happens every day it's it's control tactics that people use so if I'm angry you need to fear me which is let's just say 99.9% .9 of the time bullshit so yeah, there's a small percentage. Someone's angry that they might actually physically hurt. 
However, most of the time, they're just angry because they want you to be scared of them. Simple as that. It's a bluff. It's a bluff. <laughs> and I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the time, if you feel fear around somebody like that, and there is no physical threat, um, you know, they might be, I don't know, I don't know, blowing their trumpet, I suppose, and then trying to stand over you. Because I guess maybe they see something in you that um, makes them believe that you're less than them, that they're allowed to behave like this. Um, so, you, I guess, 99.9% .9 of the time, believing this is what actually feeds their, feeds the pattern, feeds the ego. So you feel the fear and you think to yourself, oh shit, that person, maybe I should submit to that person, maybe I should, uh, let them stand over me. Maybe I should let them be angry with me because maybe I did something wrong and it's, they're probably valid in being angry at me the way that they are. And, and I'm talking, I'm talking about aggressive anger. I'm not talking about anger in general. I guess anger in general is just an emotion doesn't have to have a big story it's like I said it's it's there when somebody is somebody is uh, gonna hurt us physically right so it's about understanding where that comes from where the fear comes from when somebody comes at you and they're angry right so then they want you to do something about it because you you fucked up their life and, and you you shouldn't be you shouldn't be breathing right now, you know, because you're in their space or whatever it is, whatever they're angry about. They mightn't even know. They just they just want somebody to, to blame, right? For their anger. That's different. That's not that's not using anger as it was, is supposed to be used as a, as a driving force energy to, to, I suppose, to get shit done and be assertive, to speak the fuck up. Be assertive. That's what anger is, to speak. It's not to hurt people. It's not supposed to be used to hurt other people. As as people believe and then there are people out there that do hurt other people and they are the people that will that will use this tactic subliminally to get you to submit you know quite simply it makes them feel better it makes them feel more, more superior it's exactly the same tactic that was used um, on I guess quite a, a lot of us growing up as kids it's quite simply it's abuse it's that's exactly what it is to use anger to physically hurt someone um, and then continue to use anger to keep people in in that in that state that they think they're going to be hurt, they think that somebody's going to physically hurt them. They think that they deserve it. They they believe that they deserve it. They believe that they've done something wrong because they broke something, or they, um, I guess didn't 
do exactly what they were told. Maybe they spoke when they weren't supposed to be spoken to. Maybe they... I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of a lot of reasons why we think people are allowed to be treat us, um, come at us, come at us with their anger and uh, treat us how they how they fucking want. So it's it's about retraining them. So it depends on. If there's a physical, if there's, a, if there's a definite physical threat, right? Leave. Or you speak up, you say your bit. Use your anger. Use your anger to say how you feel. Use it to drive and have a voice. Stand strong. Stand firm. Don't move. However, like I said, if there's a physical threat, leave. If they're not going to respect how you feel about being spoken to, like, like, I guess aggressively, if they won't respect it, you've only got three choices. Speak up. Tell them to stop. Put a boundary in. If they don't stop. <clears throat> leave third choice if you can't leave they won't listen to you well you 100% cannot leave except they're angry except it's their problem except they're not going to negotiate they're not going to be fair about it so it's about disengaging. And I mean there is different types of anger. There's obviously there's the outward expression of anger. And then there is the passive anger. They ignore you. They I guess It's, this is a tricky one, this one. They say there's nothing wrong. You know there is. You know that they're angry. You can see it. However, they insist that there's something wrong with you. Or, no, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. It's called suppression suppression of anger that is hiding anger that is probably more toxic than outward expression of it um, like I spoke about previous it's toxic and you will in that situation have two choices trust yourself you know you know they're angry with you you know that they're ignoring you they don't respect you you can pretty well speak to them and and say hey you're angry if there's an argument no, I'm not angry. No, I'm not. There's something wrong with you. Well, they, you know, abuse. They're trying to invalidate you. How you feel. The other choice is to trust yourself. Trust. That. However you feel. Is valid. However. You don't have to believe that you have done something wrong because you haven't. It's actually a tactic 
it's quite quite widely used. It's lots of people do it. But to ignore is basically basically a control tactic. They want to control you. Why? Why do they want to control you? That's the big question. Why? Because they feel out of control. They feel like they have no control over their own emotions. So then they choose to control you. And that is where you have a choice. Like I said, there's not many choices. You can argue, you can cry about it, you can um, get upset with yourself about it. I did something wrong. I'm the worst person in the world. I can't believe I did this. These, they're thought patterns. They're trained. They're not even part of you. You know, they're they've been trained trained in, into the subconscious mind. So when someone's ignoring you, you've done something wrong, and you will feel you will feel like you're the worst person on the planet. You deserve to be ignored. I can't believe that. You'll say to yourself, oh, what did I do wrong? And they won't tell you. Why, why, don't they, why don't they tell you what you've done wrong? Because they enjoy it. Because they get off on it. Because it makes them feel powerful. Because they have full control over you. And they know that if you are ignored long enough eventually you're gonna snap right so you're either gonna, you're gonna yell out and you're gonna storm off or you're gonna go and cry you're gonna beg we're gonna leave either way they're all valid, they're all, I guess, understandable when you don't understand what's going on. So, what do you do? So if you're, I guess, you're feeling bad and somebody doesn't want to communicate with you, they're trying to control you, right? We've established this. So they basically want you to suffer. They want you to hate yourself because it makes them feel good. Secretly they won't tell you this. They'll never admit it. It's their, it's their greatest secret. It's their greatest fear of being exposed. That this is actually their thought patterns. This is actually what they believe about you. They do believe you're pathetic. And they do... They do know that you are going to blame yourself for how they are behaving because <laughs> it's a pattern it's a pattern and it goes in a cycle this is the climax of the of the end of the pattern right so it goes through usually lots of yelling and, and things and like I said leaving or I suppose we throw tantrums right so we throw a tantrum that's their tantrum is ignoring that's how they throw a tantrum and we throw a tantrum because we're not getting the attention that we want 
We want some attention. We want to talk. We want to communicate. They don't want to. They want to maintain the power. So if you tell them what they're doing, do you think anything's going to work? What you say? No. Do you think there's anything you can do about the situation to change it? Essentially, they are abusing you. And that's where you have to ask the question to yourself. Well, do I deserve to be controlled? Do I deserve to be abused. It's as simple as that. Do you want to? Is there a part of you that, <laughs> that believes you deserve that shit? Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of different scenarios that end in that situation but at the end of the day the situation is always the same they ignore you all this drama happens you come back over time not all the time but and start it all over again. You basically are the doormat, unfortunately. And although I guess a lot of people are in denial about that because they believe everything the other person says, they, I guess, put that person maybe up on a bit of a pedestal above their own own, uh, I guess, truth and, and their own trust in themselves. They trust these people more than they trust themselves. And I guess there's where it all goes a bit pear shaped because you know on the deepest level you know that person's angry and they're saying that they're not angry so who do you believe? Again, I'm, 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 I'm telling you if you don't trust yourself. How you feel, don't trust how you're feeling. You will choose to trust them. Now, unfortunately, if the situation is exactly as I'm describing it. This person will say and get you to believe pretty well whatever they want. So you will. <clears throat> Basically, you believe them, obviously, if that situation's ended and the cycle begins again, obviously, there's the, the makeup, cuddles, etc. You believe 
everything that follows after that, which is, I'll tell you how great you are, how much they missed you, how, how they um, thought about you a lot etc 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 what they won't say is that it was their responsibility in any way they will distract you into believing and feeling like you're great again so they control when you're feeling like shit and then when the cycle begins to repeat again they're controlling how you feel about yourself so what you believe about yourself is controlled completely by them and though I'll tell you exactly what you want to hear over and over again and then I guess they'll start to slowly say less nice things won't particularly say anything nasty. It's just because you're wanting them and relying on them and looking to them and believing them. So you you get the the pattern here. The pattern is everything is about them you think or you believe I guess then when they say how great you are how pretty you are how handsome you are how all these these things they say and you believe it and it's not about don't believe anything anyone says it's about trusting our own feelings it's about trusting what's deeper than feelings which is our knowing we know we know and they don't want you to have certainty about how you feel they don't want to validate how you feel their job is to invalidate their job is to confuse and twist the truth and control you to keep you in the pattern and it's it's quite a simple thing when you when you I guess when you see it I see it a lot um, especially in like inter intimate relationships you see this dynamic constantly playing out and I guess I can understand where it comes from because I know exactly where it comes from and it's not about where it comes from because you don't want to control the other person you cannot control the other person nor should you even try or want to. It's about that other person. I guess... actually... proving... that they care, as opposed to saying or convincing 
that they care. So it's more about if you distrust what you know deep inside, then you'll allow yourself to believe, I guess, the emotions as opposed to using them to, to know who you're not. I mean, I can tell you right now that the emotions that you experience in that that time that you um, somebody's being passive passive aggressive, those emotions are valid, I guess. They're fear of the person. And like I said, if that person isn't going to come to the table and communicate and take responsibility for basically their abuse, um, that person does not care. Does not care about your feelings. And that person is at that point pretty well controlling you so the question is how do I regain control like I said you have two choices Well, actually, there's three choices. Speak up. Leave. Or accept it. Accept that that's abuse. Arguing, begging for forgiveness, begging for them to give you attention is exactly what they want and it's a trap that only serves them so I guess coming back to fear it's just a, a little uh, I guess dissection and um, insight into that type of fear so that's more that's more a childhood fear that's more of a person who is being trained to be dependent on another person so which means that that person will not be allowed to focus their attention anywhere but that person and there's 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 a lot of tactics that are used from a small age it's basically saying that that let's just say for instance an adult believes that that child is there to serve them. That child is there to be dependent on them. That child is there to give the parent attention, whether it be negative or positive, whether it be, <clears throat> whether it be healthy or unhealthy, it doesn't matter as long as it's all about the parent or the adult so in saying that 
I could almost say that a lot of people have been in, in, in that situation where they constantly are trained, I suppose they're trained to, to crave attention from these types of people and it's a never-ending cycle it's because there's not not the uh, I guess the the parent is like I said training training all the attention on them so the cycle is continued all through childhood um, and It's basically looking for that attention and the person, I guess, the, the trained person always seeks that attention from the other person and it, it's actually it never comes and it's actually not possible to find the actual attention that they need to recover from that so it's more about I guess trained to have your attention on the person as opposed to try to to actually them actually teaching you that it's it's more important and healthy to train your attention on what's going on inside. That's how you break out. So it's teaching you that if you feel fear, um psychological fear and believe that you're less than you actually are that at the time I guess was supposed to be nurtured I suppose that's the responsibility of the parent to, to nurture and to hold the little kid and to teach the little person that that feeling is okay. It's okay to have that feeling. And it's not true. So to calm the person and teach the person how to hold attention on the emotion itself however what they do is to invalidate so somebody is feels the fear and then they say well that's because you didn't listen that's why that's why you're a bad person. That's why you're a bad kid. Because you... You made the mess. Etc. So it's... The truth is... That... 
my business things in the world break somebody expressing their anger at you trying to get you to believe something about yourself is abuse so it's everywhere so it's more about letting go of the story around the fear around the feeling when it comes up so and it's usually when it's a habit when it's a habit to believe that oh shit I just broke something I'm a bad person and then you feel obviously the fear comes in oh shit there's the fear that must mean I'm a bad person so I guess to reteach ourselves that the world and every single thing that's in the world is supposed to break and there is nothing that validates that kind of behavior where you impose negative belief systems on people by using your anger. It's more about understanding that that behavior is coming from basically a person who has no control so they yell and they blame and I guess there's parts of us going through that and believing that that is how you control someone else so we basically grow up and we use these tactics that we used on us we use anger to impose belief systems on someone else and I guess like I said anger is is used to basically basically unsuppressed anger so anger without the story anger the feeling of anger is supposed to be used for assertiveness so to basically stand our ground and say how we feel and the other person has two choices 
which is to respect how you feel and they'll they'll validate how you feel and they'll understand or they'll get angry back at you which is aggression there's a difference there's an assertive use of that emotion and then there's the reactive use of that emotion and the difference is understanding that the emotion is there to tell you that there's a threat and that you should speak up. You should express how you feel. You should tell that person that that behavior is unacceptable. Um, you should tell that person that your if you if if that's where you are at how how you are not willing to accept that abuse. So, anyway, it's, it's a pretty deep subject. Um, those emotions are, in those situations, are pretty, I guess, intense at times, but they don't have to be, I guess. They, they're they pretty clear, especially if they're the situation that um, I've outlined, I guess, in this pattern, the situation of the invalidation. So if you tell somebody how you feel, they don't respect it, like I said, it's, it's abuse. So rather than trying to argue with that person, which is, or react, out of anger, react, which is exactly what they want. You can acknowledge that they aren't going to communicate acknowledge that how you feel is valid so maybe you feel afraid or angry and make a choice it's always helpful to identify the pattern and understand that they are just wanting your attention. So then it becomes the question. They are abusing me. They will not acknowledge it. They will not validate how I feel. What am I going to do? and leave 
am I going to accept that for how I want my life? Speak up. And acknowledge how I feel. So, that particular situation <laughs> is I guess a turning point where it's about um, letting go of the fear that arises subconsciously when people are aggressive with you and choosing to stand firm say your bit leave as opposed to reacting So, at the end of it all, it's choice. It's choice. What do I deserve? and acting on that decision. What follows has to be completely accepted. So they could abuse, they could could listen. They, they may be at the point where they might want to communicate. And it's, it's about making the choice of causing of, uh, sorry, Choosing to be responsive and responsible as opposed to reacting and being controlled. And they might not, I guess, show any emotion because that's their I guess control tactic however they will I guess lose that makes sense it's about to them I guess it's a game and to them they always win and to you it's not a game and no matter what happens they, they're, they're going to believe that they are in a game and they have won. So it's not about trying anything. It's more about looking at 
the situation for what it is. And letting go of all the stories that they may eventually respect you and validate you and understand you and come to your level <clears throat> because they need to believe that they are above you so they will not let you be heard they will not show any or very little reaction So basically, that situation is a reflection of what they believe about you, though they'll never admit it question is do you want to believe that about yourself do you want to be assertive and not submissive when the fear comes in do you want to use that fear to drive assertion to speak your mind or do you want to believe what that fear tells you? Do you want to believe the story which has been trained into your mind about who you are? Do you want to believe that you're doing something wrong? Do you want to believe that you deserve that type of treatment? Or do you want more for yourself? And train your attention away from how they are reacting or behaving. And give yourself the attention that you are looking for. So retrain your attention of what they're doing and what your mind is saying about you and hold your attention on the present feelings that you're feeling. validating yourself okay peace